How can you tell if they're too high or too low? Oh, look, the general rule of thumb is to just slam them and hope for the best, Craig. Just as low as you can go, 200 millimetres a drop is a good rule of thumb for everyone. Um, yeah, for just sure. Like just like the pros. Just uh, only Adam Hansen. Uh, <laughs> so look, this is a good question. Um, how to know if they're too high or too low? You could, for example, measure the number. You could measure the drop um, and then come up with a, a figure. But I actually wouldn't bother because a normal amount of drop, if you're an abnormal person, like you've got shorter arms or a long torso or a low seat height or something, the, the measurement of the drop will be a bit uh, spurious. You won't know what to do with the number. So don't, don't worry about measuring it. But how, what can you feel in your position if the bars are too high or too low is, is probably the best, the best kind of question to ask. Now this presupposes, of course, that the back end of the bike is set up well. If the, if the, the seat height, the seat setback, the reach, is, you know, everything is, is roughly right in the back end. The cleat position is good. You should be able to start sensing things in the front end better once your pelvis is set up in the right spot. So always before you go about messing with the front end, always try and set the back end of the bike properly, correcting the seat height, correcting the seat setback, correcting the cleat position. Follow the videos that we've got on this topic first. And then once the back end feels stable, then start feeling out what to do with the front end. You must always do it in this sequence. So how do you know if the bars are too high or too low? If they're too high, then these are rules of thumb, but they're pretty good. These, are pre these carry across large groups of people pretty well. If the bars are too high, what you'll find is that you'll, you'll tend to prop more weight onto them, which seems counterintuitive. People always have this idea that the higher the bars are, the easier the front end will be to deal with. But what happens is when the bars are too high, people tend to prop their weight up on them. They will sit more upright than they naturally, than the torso angle that they naturally want to, to, to gravitate towards. They will also therefore find more weight on the hands, neck discomfort from loading the hands, that sort of thing. You might notice if, if you take a photo of yourself on a trainer, for example, that your torso if the bars are too high, your torso is trying to sort of drop down between your shoulder blades. So instead of your shoulders being in a nice neutral position, your scapulas will be almost getting pushed back around your chest wall and it'll almost look as if you're trying to drop your chest down between your shoulders. And that's pretty much always a sign that the bars are too high. So that's a good one. An increase in weight in the hands, bit of neck discomfort from that weight, maybe hand numbness if the bars are too high, and a sense that you're trying to drop your torso between your scapulas. That's the sort of thing you'll find in the front end of the bike if the bars are too high. In the back end, you might notice that you, you rotate your pelvis back away from the front of the seat and, and the, the sensation of pressure under the two points of the, the sit bones, as, as people call them, start to become a bit more harsh if the bars are too high. So people will naturally, a lot of people, rotate their pelvis back to kind of help lift the front end up if the bars are too high. So a sense of being too harshly pressurized under the two sit bones, under the two points of the ischiopubic ramus, is another sign often that the bars are, are too high. So look for those things to be too high. If you find that you ride in the drops almost preferentially or more than 50% of the time when you're out on the road, the bars are too high. So what you're, what you're telling yourself there is that I subconsciously want to be lower and the best way of getting me lower apart from just dropping my elbows right down is to actually be in the drops. So if you find yourself riding in the drops preferentially because it's more comfortable, the bars are probably too high. So that's another one to look for, almost forgot. Now, how to know if they're too low? If they're too low, most people will start to rotate their pelvis forward to meet the lower bar height in an attempt to get their shoulders and head down forward and, and lower towards the lower bar height. Often that will be accompanied with an increase in pressure on the front of the seat. So an unresolvable kind of perineum pressure issue where you've tried a lot of different saddles on a lot of different angles and you're still getting too much perineum pressure. It sometimes means that the bars are too low. So look for frontal saddle discomfort if the bars are too low. Projecting your scapulas around your chest wall to reach down and then locking the elbows out into full extension to get down to the turn to the hoods. If you see this really rounded posture, it probably means the bars are too low. Some people are kind of built like that anyway, but if you find yourself adopting that and with it comes discomfort in the middle fibers of your trapezius here between your shoulder blades or your, your rhomboid musculature, that will often be accompanied by this scapular protraction around the chest wall. Often that means the bars are too low. Having said that, you do get that if the bars are too far away as well. But that's one of the things to look for. 
if you never gravitate towards the drops. So the polar opposite of what we spoke about before. If you never gravitate towards the drops, if you can, I, I always say to my riders, if you can ride in the drops for three to five minutes without any major problems, that's, 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 that, that's okay, that's, that's enough. But if you find that you can't ride there for more than 20 or 30 seconds without really wanting to get out of that position, the bars may well be too low. So, you know, another good thing to look for is when you go into the drops, if that sense of frontal perineum pressure on the front of the seat gets just too strong, the bars may well be too low. Um, it can mean that the, the seat needs to be changed in angle or design, but often it means that the bars are too low. So look for discomfort in the middle of the back, a sense of protracting the scapulas around the chest wall, locking the elbows out to get down to the bars, and frontal saddle discomfort. Those are the sort of big indicators that your bars may well be too low. Um, Another weird oddball one, you may sometimes come across a person where their only symptom of the bars being too low is lower back pain. And of course, what's usually happening there is as they flex forward, the hip is starting to run out of range or they're, or they're not capable of stabilizing their torso on that low angle and they will rock and they will get lower back pain. It's, people have this idea that you get the back pain from being too stretched out, but it's usually not the case. It's the rock that's induced in the pelvis from the reach being untenable. You know, so the person is stretched out beyond their ability to stabilize themselves. So they rock uncontrollably on the seat and they get lower back pain. Um, I have also seen quite a few clients over the years with upper hamstring discomfort from the bars being too low. So if, if their pelvis is rotated far too far forward outside of their, their natural kind of range of motion, they might get upper hamstring discomfort from the hamstring having to operate in a really lengthened position across the bottom of the stroke. So those are the things to look for. Um, as, as with all of these things, uh, you can get all of these symptoms from other problems as well, but that'll give you a bit of an idea if they're too low. And one of the best ways of doing this is actually to film yourself. Get yourself on a trainer and, and try and ride and, and, and get someone to film you from the side and ride at multiple intensities, a light intensity, an FTP style intensity, and then a VO2 max intensity, and just watch your shoulder posture and watch what actually is happening, because it may be very obvious to you what's going on when you look at an image of yourself, but you may not be able to feel it very well on the bike. And um, you might look at the image and go, oh gee, yeah, look at my shoulder posture. No wonder I'm getting trouble, but you can't really feel it that, that what's, what's happening that accurately on the bike. So some footage of yourself um, to look at your shoulder posture, not a bad move in that case. Mm -hmm.